Hey, what's up guys? It's Phil and this is 3D Japan and today we're going to be taking a game controller and using 3D scanning and 3D printing to mod it. So <laughs> that should be a lot of fun and be sure you stick around till the end of the video because I've been working with the uh, people at Reverpoint and we're going to be giving away one of these Reverpoint mini scanners. All right, so this project started out as, a, as something a couple, I was starting a couple years ago. It was uh, going to be called, a, or is called, a pie cart. And that's where you take an old NES game, uh, in this case uh, Wolverine, because it's a terrible game, and empty out the cartridge, take out all the contents, and replace it with a Raspberry Pi Zero W. Um, I never actually got around to finishing that project. <laughs> But these are the controllers that I was going to be using for that, and I decided it would be fun to mod them and you know, make it a little different, do a little something different with it. And so we'll be scanning it, and uh, honestly, I already scanned it. So, But we're just going to show it anyway, just for the hell of it. So I've unscrewed it, and take the back off. And this is the part I'm going to be working on with the back. So get it on the scanner and let's do some scanning. Okay, so like I said, I did scan this before and I tried a number of different positions to have it at. And what I actually found worked best was to use one of these binder clips or maybe you could use uh, some of this uh, blue tack here. But I found this worked well. Just clip that on there. And I could just stand it up. And it just rotates around while it's scanning. Uh, but because it's black, I will need to spray it with some of this uh, scanning spray. Okay, that may not be the best scanning job, but this is just a demonstration, really. Get the scanner connected. Here's my wire. Hey, that's on. I'll start my screen capture for you guys. Let's, uh, start recording. Okay. Let's uh, start a new scan. And I'm going to do this one in feature mode. I'll do a high accuracy scan. Click OK. I'm going to turn on the turntable. So we start rotating. Okay, let's adjust our exposure. So a scan actually shows up. Adjust the scanner position. Okay, that's pretty good. Maybe adjust the exposure a little bit. Okay, so let's hit start. I'm going to wait until we get around to the front. There we go. Okay, it started scanning. Okay, there we go. So we've got this whole top part scanned. So to do the other side, I would just flip it over, do another scan, and then merge the two in the Revo Studio app that's free. Um, yeah, so that's it for this. Uh, now we've got this scanned, and we'll go over to the computer and see what I did over there. 
Okay, here's our scan loaded in 3D coat. Uh, can take a look. I did uh, use the smoothing tools to clean it up a little bit. Um, there's still, you know, a little bit of some messy areas, but those aren't really going to be an issue because they don't really affect anything. And it's all going to be inside the controller anyway. So, let's uh, take a look at the back here. There's a little ridge there, but it's fairly flat. Uh, you can see even the the label I got scanned there. I did have to punch out these holes for the screws because um, they you know, just got filled in a little bit. Okay, so then I designed these handles. And yep, uh, so th they may not be perfect, but you know that's why we have 3D printing to prototype stuff. Okay, now so now I have uh, switched to voxel mode and merged the handles into the original scan, so it's all one piece now. Yep, and it you now did a little bit more cleanup on it. So now let's. Uh, Give these a little bit more texture here. So they have a little more grip and it looks a little nicer too. So I'm going to switch my build tool and put on a stencil and make our brush size a little bigger. And we can just draw this on. I think this would look pretty cool. Okay, that's one side done. Now I'll come over and I'll do the other side, and then we'll be ready to print it. Okay, so we're all finished printing. I think it looks fantastic. I printed it in some of this uh, Voxelab red resin. It's uh, semi-transparent. Now, I'm not sure if you can see from here, but uh, part of it is a little more opaque than other parts. And so one thing, if I printed this again, um, I hollowed out the model before printing and some parts of it were, I guess, a little bit thicker than others. So around here and here, it is uh, solid. And then in here, there's like an air gap. So it, uh, yeah, so it looks good around here and a little bit less good around here, but Otherwise, as far as the actual textures and the material and everything just looks really nice. Now I did have to do a little bit of sanding and filing to uh, make some of the holes and everything fit right. I did a test fit on the uh, main controller, the original controller part, and made sure that it would fit, but I have not tried screwing it in yet. So, uh, so here is a little comparison you can see between the new one and the original. Okay. There's, there's the other side. Okay, this, it was a lot of fun to work on this. Let's do a test, uh, let's uh, fit it on there. It's a little bit snug around the cord, but uh, otherwise it seems to be fitting pretty well. 
Yeah, very little gap the way it should be. All right, let's try and put some of these screws in. Uh, unfortunately, I did lose a screw, so I have four instead of five. But I'm gonna dump them out. There we go. My screwdriver. This controller uses a very small screwdriver bit. There we go. I think that is really cool. Of course, you don't have to use red. You could use uh, whatever color your controller is. <laughs> it fits in the hand really nicely. I'm happy with that. Yeah, and these are pretty decent controllers too. I'll, if I, I bought these a while ago. Uh, if I can still find them on Amazon, I'll put a link down below. Now, they're obviously uh, Super Nintendo style, but they have a USB plug. Okay. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Uh, there's one thing I noticed the way it fits around my finger here. I would have curved this a little bit more. But, you know, if I do another iteration, then that'll be it. Okay, I'm <laughs> really happy with that. Put that right there. Okay, now, something else I've been very excited about. This is really fun. We're going to be giving one of these away. So, let's talk about how to do that. Okay, so I talked to uh, my contacts at Riverpoint, and they offered to give away one of these minis. And uh, so, let's take a look here. It comes with the scanner itself, of course, the tripod, all the cables, and the turntable. And all the software for it is a free download. So, uh, it's quickly from the website, it says it has amazingly, amazingly precision of 0.02 millimeters. Uh, it uses industrial blue light for the scanning. It has a scan speed of up to 10 frames per second. And it has versatile scanning modes, which means you can use it on the turntable or handheld, just turning it around. And uh, the easy use software. And it is, of course, compatible with pretty much anything that accepts like OBJ files. And the retail price for it is $799. And so if you want to enter to win one, all you have to do is click the link down below and there's, it'll be a Gleam website. You can go in and uh, you just have to visit my YouTube channel, which you're already doing, and then visit the Riverpoint channel. And then there might be a few other things you can do to get some extra entries. So as I mentioned, uh, Riverpoint is actually the one giving it away. Uh, what you'll receive is a coupon code to enter and order it from the website that'll make it 100% off. I uh, also have to mention that YouTube is not at all affiliated with this. It's just me and Riverpoint. So I can't require you to subscribe or anything, but I would appreciate it if you did, if you like this kind of thing. Please subscribe, please uh, leave a comment below if you like, please like if you liked the video, and I'll see you next time, and uh, may the odds be ever in your favor.